Next is a confirmation of council appointments. City Attorney. This, is, <clears throat> this was introduced at the last uh, regular meeting. Uh, Robert Rank to be considered for appointment to the Housing Authority to fill the unexpired term of Barbara Knauf, whose term expires 4-23-2018. Again, signed by the Mayor. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That's before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on passage. didn't come up for some reason, but I. I. 13 ayes. City Attorney. Then <clears throat> to members uh, <clears throat> for appointment to the Business Improvement District, Pamela Butler Channel, business owner, Eileen Simmons, property owner, William Holbrook, property owner, Tyler Ott, business owner, and Chad Pelichek, city government, signed by the mayor. <clears throat> Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to confirm. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by calling aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next is a special program. Amy Wilson, the Director of Tourism and Planning for the Chamber of Commerce and uh, Tourism is here to tell us about the 2015 Sheboygan Tourism Marketing Plan. Welcome, Amy. Hello, good evening. Um, I gave you all a packet of slides so you can follow along a little bit easier. Um, tonight, I'm just gonna give you a broad overview of the marketing strategy for 2015. If you'd like to discuss anything more detailed, we do have a much more detailed plan um, that we follow in the office with our day-to-day -day strategies and our goals. Um, but we'll start with the first slide, which is, I'm gonna read these um, across the top first and then the bottom on each page. So these are just trends that we have right now. These are the trends we look at when we're doing the marketing plan. Um, generally, they come out in May every year for the prior year. So we're kind of usually a little bit behind because we get these trends from the state, from the third party uh, marketing company that they hire and research company to look at the economic status of, in the state in each county. So as we look at visits to, sh to Wisconsin destinations between 2012 and 13, they were up 3.5%. Hotel room demand grew by 2.7%. Average daily rate increased 3%. And overall hotel room across the state was up 5.7%. So this tells us everything's on the rise right now. Um, in 2000, and actually this is true pretty much every year, leisure travel comprises about 88% of visitor spending in Wisconsin. Um, so leisure travel is the highest market, the largest market that we can shoot for it and target. Overnight visitors um, comprise about 67% of our visitor spending at 7.3 billion across the state. Day visitors about 3.6 billion. Um, the visitors spend about 2.7 billion a year on lodging. That's an increase up over 4% from last year. And 2.7 was spent on food and beverage, and that's a 6% increase from the prior year. What's interesting is this is the first time that food and beverage has actually matched lodging. It's usually a lot lower. So this tells us that everyone's going for a, the food and beverage and culinary experience. Um, retail captured about 2.3 billion, and that's also on the rise to, at 2.3%. And visitor spending for entertainment and recreation increased 6.3%, totaling about 1.4 million or billion. Now the difference here is that um, the, the last line, recreation, that's what we really look at, because in our area, our largest tourism asset is the outdoor experience and the lake. So that's what we're pushing. So if we go to the next page, you can see the nine-year room tax trend for the city of Sheboygan. You can see kind of down by 2009 and 2010 where the recession hit, that doesn't look any different than anywhere else across the state, everything kind of tanked. Um, be, but between 2011, when we kicked off the first marketing plan for tourism, um, and between then and 2013, city room taxes increased by over 38%. For this year, our quarter one is up 7.47%, quarter two is up 9.53% over last year, 
And we just received quarter three room tax today, and that's up 8.75% over last year. If we look at the next slide where the chart is, you'll see everything marked in pink. Those are projected numbers. We don't have quarter four in, obviously, yet for this year, and 2015 <coughs> is projected. If you look at the boxes in yellow, those are the largest quarters on record. So this year, it looks like we're having a record-breaking year right now, which is very good. On the next slide, we'll talk about the 2015 projections a little bit. Though We always project a little low to avoid risk. Um, one of the reasons for that is if anything were to happen beyond our control, we don't want to commit money out to media contracts or buys that we don't have coming in. So we, we project a little conservative. Um, so city room tax projections for 2014 are a little bit more robust than they have been in the past, and that's because now we're showing a two-year trend where we're hitting over 380,000 in collected room tax, um, and we're projecting actually for 2015, actually this is our third year, we'll hit over 380. So for 2015, we're projecting 370,000. So we are a little conservative, we really hope to go over that 380 mark, but just in case. Um, this is a little bit different than 2014, this year when we didn't have that trend, we projected about 353 to come in and we're gonna hit that 380 again, third year in a row. So, and that room tax, by the way, is the 70% that comes into the chamber for tourism promotion and development, and it does not include Blue Harbor, and it also doesn't include the 30% that goes to the city's general fund. Um, some of the risk factors that we're looking at, obviously, is weather. We're looking at a fairly, a little bit warmer <laughs> winter than last year coming at us, but with more precipitation, so hopefully that'll still help us with some travel. Um, inflationary pressures are stagnant, and in our area, we're usually in a pocket of the country where inflation kind of tends to hold pretty well. Um, consumer optimism is up right now. On the rise, the Fed's telling us our large purchase loans, and consumers are out seeking credit again, um, and for larger purchases, such as cars, homes, boats, campers. This is actually good for us. Some people think, oh, well, if they're spending money on that, what about travel? Well, we're a low-cost drive-in destination, so this is actually good for us if consumers are spending again. Um, on midterm elections, we know the outcome of those, but we don't really know about any policy changes that we're facing, but everyone's facing those as well. So that's just something we're gonna keep our eye on. Um, so on to the next page. Our competitive advantage, which we've been working on now for four years with the first marketing plan, has always been that we've been billing Sheboygan as an affordable drive-to destination with an abundance of low-cost or free family activities and recreational opportunities. Um, so we'll, we'll move to the next slide. So leisure travelers, um, these are marketing considerations are basically that we build our main marketing strategies and goals off of. Leisure travelers within driving distance and with the most propensity for overnight stays, that's out of a 50-mile 50, 50 range, um, is considered someone who would probably stay overnight. So you see most of our marketing efforts you won't see around locally because that money is invested in Chicago and oh, it's beyond Milwaukee and in the radius and the markets that we go after. Um, like I said, the, the, one of the major things that we push in all of our marketing strategies are recreational opportunities and family activities. And we're also looking at different niche mediums and digital interaction, obviously, um, right now, we have, oh, the generations from millennial to X and Y who are comprising about 45% of the buying power right now. So we're really focusing on the channels that they're most interested in. So if we go to the next page, this gets just as a chart, a different way to look at it, and it tells you, um, shows you the leisure at 88% of tourists traveling through Wisconsin and 67% of those is overnight stays. The next slide shows you um, recreation and entertainment had the highest percentage increase between 2012 and 13, and that was for the third year in a row. So this is something that's really growing. We go to the next page. This just gives you a, a couple of the metrics of what we've been looking at. Now this is current. It's from January 1st through the end of October this year when we wrote the marketing plan. Um, and what you're looking at on the first chart is the weekly, weekly web traffic for unique visitors, brand new visitors, um, throughout the spring to the Visit Sheboygan website, decreased slightly in the summer and increased again in the fall with an overall increase of 2.52%. Um, and this is consistent with how we did our patterns. Now remember, our room tax is 
um, is having a record-breaking year right now. One of the reasons for this pattern is that um, in peak season, we're generally near sellout pretty much in the county. Um, and that's just from Road America, from PGA, from all of the promotions the hotels are doing, that's our peak season. So we pulled back on advertising at that time. Of course, we just had our biggest summer quarter. Um, and we put most of our advertising dollars into the shoulder seasons, and you can see those pumped up. So that didn't hurt us at all. That's what we wanted to see is we want buyers here in the summer, but we want to see those increases coming in on the shoulder seasons. Um, so our media buys increased in Madison and Chicago, and that resulted in increased web traffic. This is the next slide, sorry, Sue, from those markets, and with an overall increase in room tax dollars. The key thing to look at there is Madison is we're just breaking into that market in the last couple years. That's an outdoor, really rec-ready market, and they have inland water, and they like to really look at open water options to try out the same type of recreation. Um, and so that, that market has been coming in pretty nicely for us. Um, if we look at the, the next slide, this just to give you an idea, we do this for each city or everywhere that we buy advertising in, but this is Chicago. It's a three-year trend. The very white line is from 2012, and the um, middle color, that peachish color, is from 2013. The brown line's from 14. If you look, you can see the trends where pulling money off the peak season and putting it into the shoulder season actually helped us. It grew the fall season and towards the end of the summer, and we didn't lose anything in peak season. And this is also explained by the room tax dollar patterns coming in. So that's the basic overview. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Alderman Warren. <coughs> Thanks, Mayor. Uh, any particular plans with the golf tournament coming up to try to capture more of those people to come into Sheboygan? Then in, I know that's been a disappointment in the past that we've got all these people coming into Sheboygan County. Are there any plans to get more of them actually to come into Sheboygan? There is. Um, there are some things that they are working on with Kohler, with the group at Kohler. Um, I don't know exactly how that's going to pan out because in the past they've not allowed us to really put visitor guides or different flyers on the golf course simply because they can't allow paper out there, which is understandable. Um, but one of the challenges isn't necessarily what can or can go on the golf course. One of the challenges is when is, it's the travel pattern when you go to a golf tournament, and it happens pretty much in every city. Um, you expect that if you have 100,000 people here, you might see cars through your downtown. But that type of travel, what happens is those people are very serious and they're spending a lot of dollars to go to that tournament. So they will be up at 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. They'll be on the course. They'll look at all the pre-things. They'll stay on that course all day. They will go out to dinner at night. Um, but then you have to remember they're going to be in bed by probably eight, nine o'clock. <laughs> so it's not easy to pull them off the course when that's where they've invested their money and time. But we are looking at things, if nothing else, putting some packages together and ways to get those distributed um, to actually help them want to come back, maybe at a different time. And that's more the strategy that the group is using this time. Anyone else? Amy, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate Thanks. the report tonight. <coughs> Next, we'll go on to public forum. Uh, none this evening. Thank you. <laughs> Under mayor's announcements, I'd just like to remind everybody that today, December 1st, winter parking rules go into effect from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Alternate side uh, of the street parking will be in place. And the simple rule is to park for tomorrow. So if it's an even day, park on the even side. If it's an odd day, park on the odd side. Uh, I also like to remind people that Shoreline Metro is hosting the Jingle Bus Tour of Lights. Uh, if you want to catch the bus at the transfer right outside of City Hall here, they will be operating on December 2nd and 4th and 9th and 11th, and they have a bus that leaves at 6 o'clock and one at 7 o'clock. And you need to bring along one perishable food item so that uh, you can contribute that when you go through the Rotary Making Spirits Bright display. And uh, that should be a fun tour for those people. Okay, next we'll move on to hearings. Uh, 2.1 is a hearing to amend the zoning map to change the use district classification of the property located at 1238 Geely Avenue from class NR6 neighborhood residentials, 
6 to UR 12 urban residential 12 classification. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? If you'd like to step up to the front, please give us your name and address and you can make your statement. Alice Richter, 2208 Cross Court, Sheboygan, uh, homeowner. I just don't know what reclassification means. I would like someone to explain that to me, what, what it is now and, and what that will involve. Okay, I'd like to call Chad Pelichek up to explain that. For those of you that don't know, this is the former Washington School property on Geely Avenue that Gorman um, Apartment Development is proposing to convert to a multifamily residential um, apartment building. What the neighborhood, the current zoning allows for one and two family, and the new zoning allows for two or more families. So under the current zoning, they wouldn't be able to convert that property to um, a multifamily tenant facility as they're proposing because it's only zoned to allow for one or two family uh, residential dwellings under urban residential 12 I think it is or six um, that would allow for them to do the proposed 40 some units 42 units that are in that property there is a condition in the zoning that has been added just for the council's sake um, as as we know this property has to go through a financing piece with WIDA um, and there's a contingency in there that should that not happen and should this project not move forward, this property would revert back to the original zoning versus being an urban residential zoning. So should they get the financing, it'll ultimately be all urban residential multifamily. And if they don't get the funding and move forward with the project, it would stay as it currently is as a neighborhood residential. Thank you very much, Chad. Did you have any other comments, ma'am? Right across the street is a, a four. <coughs> That's zoned the same as what that's proposed to be zoned. Oh, because here. that's on the other side of the street. It's by parcel. Okay, so you're just going to rezone all of the <coughs> that. We're we're only rezoning the portion of the property that the school sits on. So the the northern piece where the ball diamonds are is not being rezoned. I don't believe. I don't have the document in front of me, but I think it's just the parcel of the property where the where the building is. Where the building is, and that is just going to be for that property. For that, for, for, that, the, for that development, purpose. yes. If this Gorman deal should fall through and the school district works with somebody else, then they'd have to petition again to do the same process. Okay, thank you. Is, is there anyone else wishing to be heard? <coughs> Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. <coughs> All those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much, that passes. Well, next we'll go on to the consent agenda, which includes items 3.2 through 3.11. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees and put all resolutions and uh, ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The, the, those items on the consent agenda are before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <coughs> 13 ayes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, 4.1 is an RO by the City Planning Commission recommending amending the text of the official zoning ordinance in section 15.206, detailed land use designations and regulations as to amend section 15.0264E that will lie over till December 15th. The remainder of the items in that section, uh, 4.2 through 4.7, will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, 
Item 5.1 is a resolution by Alderman Donahue amending <coughs> substitutes of resolution number 66 of 1415 relating to certain changes to the city's medical benefit plan for 2015 so as to allow otherwise eligible retirees to participate in either the standard plan or the qualified high deductible <coughs> plan. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the uh, rules be suspended at this time. Thank second. You. Second. Thank you for that motion and second on suspension. <coughs> All those in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Under suspension. Thank you. Um, uh, accordingly, come, I would uh, move that the uh, ordinance be put upon its passage. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a question uh, for the next year after that then. Uh, I believe I heard at a previous meeting that we're going to be going to the high deductible plan for all the employees. Will that be the intention with this to eventually just offer the high deductible plan for the eligible retirees also? Alderman Donahue, do you have anything uh, to offer that? Thank you, Your that? Honor. That is uh, my understanding at this point. Any other discussion? See none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Mary Lynn? Hasn't come up. Admit, let me go back. Sorry. Hi. Got it. 12 eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 5.2 will lie over. Items 5.3 through 5.11 will be referred to various committees. Going on to reports of committees, item 6.1 is an RC by long licensing recommending denying a beverage operator's license number 0585 based upon her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application, her record of violations related to the licensed activity, and her record as a repeat law offender and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Alicia Bullock here this evening? She is not. We did invite her to our meeting two times and she did not show up. Is there any other discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is an RC by the Committee of the Whole and was referred RC number 192 of 1415 by salary and grievances who met and discussed the Chief Administrative Officer's term and recommends amending section 2.341 of the Municipal Code that James Amodio is hereby appointed as the Chief Administrative Officer for the City of Sheboygan until August 23rd of 2016. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. I move that this uh, report of committee be accepted uh, and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Eleven eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 through 6.5 will be referred to various committees. Under ordinances, uh, 7.1 will lie over. And under matters laid over, 8.1 is RO number 183 of 1415 by the City Planning Commission, who has referred general ordinance number 35 of 1415 in RO number 60, 165 of 1415 to amend the zoning map to change the use district classification located at 1238 Geely Avenue from class NR6 neighborhood 6 to class UR12 urban residential classification. Alderman Bellinger. 
Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file and pass your ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That's before us for discussion. <clears throat> Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on that property, is that going to be uh, the Gorman Company, I believe, is the one that uh, Chad mentioned. Is that going to be subsidized housing, or is there a chance that that could be some housing that we're going after in our plan to get more housing for uh, upscale apartments? No, this is going to be Section 42 housing, and uh, we'll have to look elsewhere for that market rate housing. Okay. Any other questions? Will the clerk then call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Eight point uh, two is a resolution number ninety three of fourteen fifteen by Alderman Hammond, Bellinger, Carlson, and Donahue and Koff, amending resolution number thirty nine of ten eleven, authorizing the finance auditor analyst to negotiate a settlement of certain liability insurance claims. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, the clerk please call the roll for passage. Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Resolution eight point three is uh, resolution number ninety four of fourteen fifteen by Alderman Hammond, authorizing implementing a revised medical benefit plan design for twenty fifteen for the Sheboygan Professional Police Officers Association regarding health insurance coverage for twenty fifteen. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm not sure we need this resolution at this point. Um, Chief Amodio, they settled, so I don't know if we need this resolution anymore. So we can withdraw this. I think I'd like to withdraw that resolution, please. Okay, thank you. Next, we'll go on to item number nine: uh, discharge the Public Works Committee. Alderman Heideman. Yeah. I need a uh, motion to uh, suspend the rules. No. Let's no. Wait. First, Alderman Hammond needs to make a motion. I'm sorry, Alderman Hammond. No problem, sir. Uh, I move to discharge the Public Works Committee regarding Resolution uh, 951415 by Alderperson Heideman regarding the acceptance of a temporary limited easement for the Taylor Drive Bike and Pedestrian Trail Project. Second. Okay. Uh, first of all, we'll take a vote on the discharge motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. I need to uh, make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion in support to suspend the rules. All those in favor of suspension signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Under suspension, Alderman Heideman. And then I take, uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion in support. Is there any discussion on the motion? The clerk, please call the roll. Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, document 10.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2014, and December 31, 2015, and June 30, 2016. Those will be referred to law and licensing. 
Next item is a proposed closed session. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption contained in section 19851E Wisconsin statutes where competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session for the purpose of deliberating regarding the review of submitted proposals on the city owned property known as the Armory and develop long term strategy regarded, related to the Little Red Schoolhouse. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll on closed session? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a five-minute recess and reconvene.